Just a few years ago, Baylor shocked everyone in the college football world when they not only put together their best season in school history, but also won the Big 12 title and beat Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl to cap off a 12-2 season. Dave Aranda looked like he was building something special and turned down multiple Blue Bloods to stay in Waco. There was excitement back in the program that had not been there since Matt Rule had ripped everyone's hearts out and left for the NFL out of nowhere in 2019. That season was 2021. Since then, Baylor is 9-17, have not beaten an FBS team at home since October of 2022, and have lost 13 of their last 16 games. The program looks to be in a tough place, but although they're on the decline, they decided to give Aranda one last year to right the ship. This is the story of the fall of Baylor, and whether they could right the ship. You won't want to miss this one. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know if you think Dave Aranda can write the ship at Baylor, and if not, who should they hire in the comment section below. When Matt Rule took over as head coach at Baylor, the program was coming off a turbulent time, and the players were beat up. Rule told The Athletic back in 2019 they had gone through a year where they were called every name in the book. And then the next year we were losing and they're hearing it. Rule had to rebuild the culture of a program while also helping getting them back to winning ways. Rule instilled a culture of hard work and team bonding to bring the team together and rebuild from the ground up. He was a damn Yankee coaching down in Texas, but embraced the culture and brought in guys like former high school coaches and now Texas Tech head coach Joey McGuire. The Rule hire had surprised many as athletic director Mac Rhodes, stressed that the coach replacing Art Bryles and Jim Grobe need to have Texas ties. Rule had none of that. He was from New York, played at Penn State, and had coached along the East Coast except for a year at UCLA throughout his whole career. When Rule arrived, the roster had been gutted with only 45 players on scholarship after many left due to the sexual assault scandal or chose to have their letters of intent changed. When he arrived, the program only had one verbal commit for the 2017 class, and Rule scrambled to get the roster back up to 85 players. Many began to question the hire after an 0-8 start and 1-11 season in 2017, which was the program's worst season since 1969, and snapped a seven-year bowl game streak. Yet Rule had a plan, and stuck to it, instead of hitting the panic button. What also kept Rule going was a letter from former Kansas State and legendary head coach Bill Snyder, which read, meant what I said, Matt. I've seen weekly improvement from your program and appreciate your players for never giving up and fighting back. You're instilling an attitude that will bring success back to your program. Wishing you continued success and good fortunes. Bill. Throughout the season, they stayed close with teams like number three Oklahoma, but just couldn't pull out the wins. There were 17 true freshmen who appeared in games that season and 27 first-time starters. The youth helped as they would improve to 7 and 6 in 2018, winning the Texas Bowl over Vanderbilt 45 to 38. Quarterback Charlie Brewer emerged as a star quarterback for the Bears, and 2019 looked like it could be a special year, and a special season it was. The defense improved significantly and Brewer broke out as a star. They won games in any way you could think of. Blowouts, close games in regulation, double overtime against Texas Tech, triple overtime against TCU. A young team that had fallen short so many times in 2017 had learned from that for the 2019 season. They started the season off 9-0, becoming the third team in college football history to start out 7-0 within two years of starting 0-7, joining 2017 UCF and the 1960 Minnesota Golden Gophers. They would lose a heartbreaker in Waco against number 10 Oklahoma 34-31, blowing a 31-10 lead going into half. They rebounded with wins over Texas and Kansas to finish the regular season 10 and 1 and set up a rematch against a now number 6 Oklahoma team. Once again, they would fall short in overtime 30 to 23 and lost to number 5 Georgia in the Sugar Bowl 26 to 14 to finish the year 11 and 3. It looked like Rule was going to turn Baylor into a Big 12 powerhouse for years to come. It was about to sign a mega contract with the Bears. Instead, Rule shocked the world and left to take the head coaching job for the Carolina Panthers, leaving college football for the NFL. 
According to Sports Illustrated, inside the Bears, most Bears fans were wishing the door actually would hit him on the way out. Cameron Stewart went on to write in 2022, Rule started with nothing, and two years after winning one game, they were a shoestring tackle away from the playoff. Love him or loathe him, Rule pulled off one of the quickest college football rebuilds the game has ever seen. Rule had left the Baylor Bears program much better than the way he found it, and it would lead to a major coaching hire in Dave Veranda, someone who probably would not have taken the job had Rule not rebuilt the program in Waco. Aranda is originally from Kern County, California, and attended California Lutheran as an undergrad, where he would start his college coaching career after coaching Radlin High School's JV squad in 1995. In 2000, he decided to go back to school to get his master's and served as a grad assistant under the late, great Mike Leach. After his time at Texas Tech, Aranda spent time at Houston, Cal Lutheran, Delta State, Southern Utah, Hawaii, and Utah State in 2012, where he worked with Gary Anderson. When Gary Anderson left to take the Wisconsin head coaching job, Randa chose to go with him, turning down offers from likes of Texas Tech and California. When Anderson left Wisconsin in 2014, Randa chose to stay, being the only assistant coach to remain on staff when Paul Chris took over. Two of Randa's three years at Wisconsin, one of his linebackers won the Big Ten Linebacker of the Year, Chris Portland in 2013, and Joe Schobert in 2015. Portland also won the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in 2013. Over Aranda's three years spent as a defensive coordinator at Wisconsin, his defense ranked first nationally in total defense, second in scoring defense, third in pass defense, and fourth in run defense. LSU came calling in 2016, and Aranda saw his salary increase from $520,000 at Wisconsin to $1.3 million at LSU to serve as a defensive coordinator. In 2018, he saw his salary increase to $2.5 million and was named associate head coach to keep him from leaving for Texas A&M. Randa would win a national title at LSU in 2019 and left to take the head coaching job at Baylor for 2020. Randa fit the build of what Baylor was looking for in a head coach back in 2016, having ties to Texas in the past. Although he had never pictured himself being a head coach throughout his career, after talking to AD Mac Rhodes, he felt like Baylor was the right fit for him and the perfect head coaching job for him as well. If you remember anything about the 2020 season, you would probably know that it was probably one of the worst times to take over a college football program, let alone be a first-time head coach. The Bears' spring practices as well as the Baylor's spring green and gold game were canceled due to COVID-19, so there was no real time to install the new offense or defense. Everything was done through Zoom for the most part as well. The Aranda era started off with a dominant win over Kansas 47-14, but they would proceed to lose the next five games, including a 27-21 double overtime loss to West Virginia. Ironically, they would beat Kansas State 32-31 to snap a losing streak, but would lose to number 13 Oklahoma 27-14 and number 22 Oklahoma State 42-3. Although they returned Charlie Brewer and were projected to finish towards the top half of the conference, The Baylor Bears instead went 2-7, finishing second to last in the conference. After the disastrous first season, Aranda fired Larry Fedora and hired BYU offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes, who had helped Zach Wilson finish top 10 in the Heisman voting and was taken number 2 overall by the New York Jets. Back in early 2021, the Athletics' Sam Kahn Jr. asked Aranda what he felt went wrong in 2020. Aranda answered, I never said, hey, this is what I want. Do it this way. Do it my way. I don't think I ever uttered those words, and I really kind of still haven't now. Randa also knew the offense would need to improve from being one of the worst offenses in the Big 12 to being one of the better units. He also made other staff changes that made the staff more cohesive. Heading into the 2021 season, there was some hope around the team. Although Charlie Brewer had transferred to Utah, they returned 10 starters on the defensive side of the ball, and had some key veterans still on the team from the 2019 squad. Many predicted Baylor to finish towards the bottom of the Big 12, but many believing they would finish 9th. The Bears had different opinions, though. They would start off the season 4-0, including two conference wins over Kansas and number 14 Iowa State. They would lose a tough matchup to top 25-ranked Oklahoma State on the road, but rebounded winning the next three games over West Virginia, BYU, and Texas all at home. Unfortunately, they would drop a close game against TCU on the road, 30-28, would go on to upset number 4 Oklahoma, 27-14, the following week, 
and closed out the regular season with a 20-10 win over Kansas State in Manhattan and a 27-24 win over Texas Tech at home. Due to their success in Big 12 play, they would take on number 7 Oklahoma State in the Big 12 title game, avenging their loss earlier in the year, winning 21-16, secure their first Big 12 title since 2014. They would take on number 8 Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl, beating the Rebels 21-7 to finish the season 12-2 and ranked number 5 in the final AP poll and number 7 in the final college football playoff poll, capping off their best season in school history. Aranda seemed like the real deal as head coach, and many thought he would leave for the likes of LSU, USC, or Notre Dame that offseason, but instead he would sign a massive contract extension, leaving him what he could build at Baylor. Aranda won AP Big 12 Coach of the Year, the Paul Bear Bryant Award Program's Big 12 Coach of the Year, and was the first Baylor football coach to win the George Munger Award, and there was a lot of excitement around the Baylor football program heading into 2022. Some felt like this could be a rebuilding year, while others felt that Baylor could win 10 games or more. Many at CBS felt like they would be competing in the Big 12 title game, with some even believing they would win the conference. The only person who did not have them playing in the Big 12 title game was Chip Patterson, who had them finishing third in the conference. They came into the 2022 season ranked as the number 10 team in the preseason polls. They started off the season with a dominant win over Albany, 69-10, and found themselves ranked ninth in the country. That was until they were upset by a top 25 BYU team in Provo, 26-20 in double overtime. They rebounded with back-to-back wins before falling to a top 10 ranked Oklahoma State team, at home 36-25. They followed that up with a 43-40 loss to West Virginia on the road, before rebounding with a win over Kansas, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma. They entered their game against the top 25 Kansas State team with a 6-3 record, and a shot at still making it to the Big 12 title game. There was still hope in the season until a gut punch of a 31-3 loss at home to the Wildcats, a heartbreaking 29-28 loss at home against number 4 TCU, and a 38-27 loss to Texas on the road to close the regular season out with a 6-6 record. Not what many expected, but not a completely terrible season if they managed to win their bowl game. They would lose 30-15 to to Air Force in the Armed Forces Bowl to close out a disappointing season 6-7. Many still believed in Aranda though, and felt like he could rebound heading into the 2023 season. Heading into 2023, in a now 14-team Big 12 league, Many expected Baylor to finish somewhere in the middle of the pack. At Big 12 Media Days, Aranda told the press, I look at last year trying to save people, maybe trying to change people, and not having enough boundaries. I don't know if it was hubris or what it was that made me think I could, but I think people are ready to change or improve when they're ready to, when they're ready to do it on their own. Aranda chose to embrace the transfer portal more heading into 2023, explaining, I think one of the struggles for me has always been if you say yes to something, a player outside of your team that's in the portal, you're saying no to a player on your team. I think for me to kind of come to grips with, hey, this is what needs to happen for the betterment of the team as opposed to just looking at what's best for that one particular player on your team. They added over a dozen transfer players and hoped to improve in 2023. If only that could have been the case. Baylor opened up the season with a loss to Texas State in a paid game, 42-31, which marked the first time the Bobcats had beaten a Power 5 team in school history. Chants from student sections saying revoke their scholarships could be heard throughout the stadium, and the offensive line struggled mightily. They followed that up with a 30-12 loss to number 12 Utah at home, before finally getting their first win of the season against Long Island. Yet, they would drop another game to Texas at home, 38-6, and an amazing comeback to beat UCF on the road, 36-35, improved to 2-4 and four after coming back from a 28-point deficit. They would once again lose at home to Texas Tech the following week, making their home record 1-5 and five on the season. Going into the game against Cincinnati, the team had struggled with energy and execution all season long. Against Texas Tech, they had four turnovers on downs and two red zone field goals. Baylor would move to 3-4 and four with a 32-29 road win over Cincinnati as they still held bowl game aspirations. But the home game woes would continue, with the 30-18 loss to Iowa State and a 25-24 loss to Houston meant they needed to win out to make a bowl game. Those hopes would be dashed as they would lose on the road to number 25 Kansas State 59-25 and close out the season with a 42-17 loss to TCU 
and a 34-31 loss to West Virginia at home to finish the season 3-9. Baylor has not won a home game against an FBS opponent since October 22, 2022, losing all seven FBS home games this past season. Many wondered whether Aranda would be fired following the season, but Baylor would elect to give him one more season, although he has lost 13 of his last 16 games in the school's first back-to-back losing season since 2009. Randa chose to replace Jeff Grimes as offensive coordinator and bring in Jake Spavadol as his replacement, making him the school's third offensive coordinator in five years. Randa also decided he would take on defensive play calling duties for the first time as a head coach this upcoming season, making him the third different defensive play caller since his arrival as well. CBS Sports wrote back in November, under his watch, Baylor has gone through the COVID-19 pandemic, introduction of NIL, an extra year of eligibility due to the pandemic, and a mass proliferation of the transfer portal. His struggles to rapidly adapt leave the Bears in a difficult position, entering a critical moment. Rand has acknowledged his struggles in how to manage the NIL side of things, but it has cost his team. Baylor's athletic department has tried to adjust in the past months, and the football collective will double in funding. That said, it's still catching up to comparable collectives at TCU and Texas Tech on which Baylor judges itself. Heading into the 2024 season, there will be high expectations for Aranda and co. as this will be year 5. Bavidal helped Cal go from the 95th best scoring offense to the 39th best last year and the Bears should have some interesting pieces on the offensive side of the ball. They added Toledo star quarterback Daquan Finn through the transfer portal who should be a spark plug for the new offense as well. With Texas and Oklahoma leaving for the SEC this season, there is a major power vacuum left behind and Baylor needs to find success unless they want to fall behind new Big 12 team and in-state rival Houston. Aranda is highly respected in the Baylor Athletic Department. He spurned outside interest to sign a long-term contract extension with the Bears in 2021. Outside of two-year starting quarterback Blake Shapin, there has not been a roster exodus. Several key players have publicly pledged to return in 2024. If Baylor does not make a bowl game, then it looks like they will be looking for a new head coach. Things are going to be interesting in Waco in 2024. What do you think? Can Dave Aranda write the ship? And if not, who should Baylor hire? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.